is a new space age upon us, one run by private commercial ventures rather than government agencies. Wednesday, the U.S. government gives landmark regulatory approval to the first commercial venture to launch a mission beyond the Earth's orbit. Moon Express Incorporated, a space exploration startup, now has a green light to send a small, unmanned scientific spacecraft to the surface of the moon in 2017. And joining us now is the chairman and co-founder of Moon Express, Naveen Jain. Welcome, Naveen, and Hello. congratulations. This has been six years in the making, correct? Yes, yes, Danny. This is so exciting. And what exactly have you been given approval to do? So this is the first time the U.S. government has given a, a permission for any company to leave Earth orbit. In fact, the only people who have ever gone to the moon are three superpowers. So not only we become the first company ever to land on the moon, we actually become the fourth superpower. Power. And it won't be UK, it won't be Germany, it won't be France, it will be a group of entrepreneurs who are doing it. So how significant is this, not just for your company, but for the future of space exploration? And to me, really, landing on the moon is a, not just about landing on the moon. It's symbolic of what a small group of entrepreneurs are capable of doing. So imagine, what is your moon shot if an immigrant who came to this country with absolutely nothing mm -hmm. can dream so crazy and land on the moon? Would you go Go out and cure cancer? Would you go out and find a cure for Zika? Would you find a cure for Alzheimer? What is your moonshot? Clearly you believe in the power of entrepreneurship, but let's talk a little bit about this interagency group that gave you approval. Mm -hmm. It was spearheaded by the Federal Aviation Administration, correct? Yeah. What did you have to prove to this group that you would do or would not do to get this green light? Sure. I mean, so first of all, this has never been done. So there was no regulatory framework. There was absolutely no agency that was, uh, you know, chartered to give you an approval, but every agency within their charter had a reason to say no. So from State Department to NSA to NASA to you go through every agency, they all say there are reasons why they could say no, but even if you were to satisfy everything, they still couldn't say yes. So we went to the White House and they had this interdepartment um, a meeting and they were able to give the permission to us. And the main thing really was that how does the United States comply with the Outer Space Treaty, which was really designed for between the countries. Right. So now suddenly a small company has to be treated like a country and they have to go figure out how the non-interference would work. So the two things they ask us to do. One was obviously not contaminating a moon or not contaminating Earth by bringing back some of the stuff that could come from the moon. And the sense. second thing was, is to really requesting, because they really can't ask, is to not to step on the heritage site, like the footprints of the Neil Armstrong. Sure. But the beauty is, we asked them for exactly the same thing reciprocally, which is, Please do not interfere with our mission. So when we land there, that's our heritage site. N not only the United States should not interfere, they should not allow anyone else to interfere. So if China wants to go do something there, we have a might of the United States to say you cannot interfere. Right, so now the U.S. government is behind yeah. your business, in other words. So tell us what exactly you need to do to launch this spacecraft, because sure. it's my understanding you're not completely ready to go yet, right? Well, obviously not, we, we are yeah. going in 2017. But the beauty of the whole thing is, then if you think about entrepreneurs, they do things in a very innovative way. So you look at Elon Musk, he's able to build a reusable rocket. And what we have done very innovatively is that we are using a rocket that costs under $5 million. Got, your but, company is getting a lot of attention yeah. for that. How is it that you can send, how is it that your mission is so inexpensive yeah. compared to what the government will spend on a comparable Well, mission? first of all, the technology is making it possible. So exponential technology is, you know, the same thing that's making the iPhones cheaper, faster, and thinner is exactly what's making this, uh, our lander smaller, faster, cheaper. So in some sense, our whole mission to the moon, Tanya, is going to be under $10 million. So what do you need, though? You <clears throat> still need a little more cash, right? You need so, a formal launch license, is that correct? Right. So I think, you know, we uh, raised $30 million. Mm -hmm. We need the last $25 million. And, you know, everyone watching this can watch the history being made. And there's only a few times in life when you get to be part of making history. So if you have $25 million, dollars, call us and you can be that, part of making this. Sure, history. I mean, yeah. you know, the U.S. hasn't been to the moon since the 60s, and right? But, <clears throat> but what is your, what is your ultimate goal sure. with Moon Express? Do you want to mine the minerals from the moon? Sure. What do you plan to do with this? So when think about it, right, you know, just to rephrase John F. Kennedy, we chose to go to the moon not because it's easy, because it's a good business. 
Is it good business because there are quadrillions of worth of minerals, whether you look at platinum grade material, you look at rare earth elements, you look at helium-3, and more than anything else, you have the water there. That means we can create the fuel depot on the moon. And you know, even if you just bring the moon rocks, you don't have to give someone you love a diamond. If you love her enough, you give her the moon. The engagement ring of the future, the moon rock. Naveen Jain, thank you so much for coming to speak to us and congratulations well, again. Thank you, Tanya.